Hey Raiders, um, so I am here today in Philadelphia um, and I am here with Jesse Moore, um, who is a uh, writer, an illustrator, and an artist, um, and also um, one of my best friends since sixth grade, so that's how long we've known each other, uh, which is a long time. Um, so I'm here today to ask her some questions um, about being a professional writer and to give us some tips on how to write for digital spaces. Thanks for having me, Phil, in Philadelphia. Phil in Philadelphia, <laughs> there you go. All right, so Jesse, my uh, first question for you is um, if you could just describe um, your job right now and describe yourself a little bit. Okay, well, I am a full-time freelance writer and illustrator. And since writing is what we're going to focus on today, I'll tell you that I have written several books mostly cookbooks. I've also written a book about unicorns, which I illustrated also. But in terms of my day-to-day -day life, I primarily do ghostwriting and content writing, in particular for uh, web. So I have written in the financial sector. I've written within the fitness and wellness sector and Gosh, many, many others. Um, so what type of genres are you normally writing? On a daily basis, I do a lot of finance writing. I write for a voice-powered application. I write for a kombucha company. And in the recent past, I wrote for a CrossFit celebrity. <laughs> Um, and so usually are these blog posts and social media posts? Blog posts primarily. Blog posts and promotional, uh, promotional materials, webinars, that sort of thing. Great. Um, and so, you know, I know that you've, um, you know, I've, I've known you as a writer since sixth grade. Um, and so I imagine writing has changed a lot for you and especially moving from books to kind of more web writing. How have you say, how would you say that your um, writing has changed over maybe, you know, the past few years? Wonderful question. I think that the biggest thing that I would share is that when I was in school and learning how to write, it's more about learning the process of writing and the format of writing an essay and the mechanics of it. But now I feel that as a writer, it's more as if I've moved into the application of writing. And as such, every project and every piece has its own unique character. So where in school, you're primarily writing to hand a project in and get a grade, usually with writing assignments, you have particular bullet points or objectives that you're trying to reach and you have a particular audience that you're trying to reach as well so i would say that you have a lot more considerations once you're out of school and working on writing projects yeah you know i mean one of the things that um, in this class we're learning is really how to identify the constraints of a different writing situation um, and write to that different situation, the audience, the purpose, etc. cetera. Um, how does that change your process? Do you use the same process for everything that you write? Not everything. Although, well, I suppose that I could outline for you my basic process that there will be infinite variations depending on what I'm doing and the breadth of the project, I suppose. But in general, I have kind of a three-part process. Part one is the phase where I just vomit words onto the page or onto the computer, as it were. I don't worry about grammar. I don't worry about the making it smart or funny or anything like that. I worry about hitting the objectives or bullet points that I need to get across. And then the second phase is where I start to go in and get real about it and start refining. I will cut off things that I don't think are necessary. And then the third phase is like the 
the finishing touches. That's where I really refine things, make sure that my grammar is on point, go through any checklists that I may have for the project at hand to make sure that I've met the objectives, that sort of thing. And how is it working with an editor? Working with an editor is a really interesting process. When, sorry, distracted by kids. <laughs> when you're uh, going back to the idea of writing in school, you're submitting your piece to your teacher. With a piece that you're writing professionally, ultimately who you're writing it for is the final audience. But before the piece gets to the final audience, it needs to go through a series of checks and balances. So when I submit the piece, I submit it to an editor and it is their job to make sure that the piece is well written, it flows well, and that it meets the objectives necessary for the project. So I think that at first when I worked with an editor, as a writer, you see them as like your enemy because you know you submit this thing that you wrote and you just want to be paid, but they're like, whoa, 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 I've got some changes for you. And you know, they can kind of seem like they're against you. But it was a real shift for me when I realized, oh, the editor isn't actually against me. They're just driven by the goal of making this piece as good as it can be for the final audience. And so I think that once I was able to have that shift, it's actually very pleasant to work with an editor. Great, yeah. Um, so um, what tips would you have for people who are writing for digital audiences, doing social media posts or writing web content for blogs or you know various other things on the internet? Well, writing for web is very different from writing for print or um, writing a book. The thing with web writing is that, number one, your objectives are usually different. Often web writing is written for the purpose of getting attention on search engines. So often you will have to consider things like incorporating keywords or adhering to a certain um, length. and. Another thing that you need to remember with web writing is that people have a very short attention span. So this is not the place to show off your massive vocabulary or to have really complex run-on sentences. Typically, I like to keep my blocks of text for web to three lines or less. And I don't wanna say that you have to dumb it down, but you do have to keep your phrasing very simple because I suppose the best way to express that is you have to assume that people are only skimming online and so you need to adjust your writing accordingly. Cool. Yeah um, and last question um, what are you know routinely what are the the biggest challenges you have kind of day to day as a writer and how do you kind of get over them? That's a fine question. <laughs> as cliche as it may sound I would say that the hardest thing about writing is simply getting started. Mm. So for me, as dorky as it may sound, a simple but effective technique that I have found is just setting timers. I'll start a timer for like 20 minutes and the idea will be I can only work on the writing for these 20 minutes. No checking Instagram, no being distracted by cute dog photos or anything like that. And typically what I find is that, and if I'm having a really hard time, I'll set a timer for like five minutes. Uh, often though, what I find is that once you get past that initial obstacle of simply getting started, it's much easier. And I'm also a big advocate of taking breaks while you write. I like to do things like take a walk around the block or do a household chore. It's just like a little palate cleanser so that you can come back to it with fresh eyes. 
Great. Um, now, is there anything else that you feel that, you know, um, college students should know about writing or about, you know, um, writing content for the web in a professional situation in the future? I would say that writing is pretty cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to say that when I started writing professionally, I kind of felt like an imposter because I was like, well, not to sound arrogant, but I was kind of like, well, writing isn't that hard, you know, like, why are you paying me to do this, you company? Why don't you just do it yourselves and not pay me? And somebody said, you have the ability to write and that is a wonderful thing. Not everyone has that ability. And so I was like, dang, so I have this like ability, this superpower that not everyone has. That's pretty cool. So I think that regardless of whether you're going to write for money or not, that writing is always going to be a skill that will serve you well. So it's worth taking the time to make sure that you become a good writer because I think that it will serve just about anyone very well in life. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and thank you for, I've been staying with Jesse for the past week. Um, so I've been hearing those timers, but um, <laughs> thank you for um, hosting me and um, speaking to my class. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you.